Good afternoon to all of you who join us from Singapore and if you're joining us from UK, good morning. And those of you who is joining us from Sydney or Melbourne, Australia, good evening. And I, under, uh, I, I got the note that uh, there are people joining us from Birmingham, San Fernando City, Adelaide, Shenzhen, Wimbled Wilburton, Albuquerque, Cedar Rapids, Perth, and Pomona. Welcome all of you. I'm Chris Ang, your moderator for today's webinar. Um, and this is brought to you on World Book Day, a day that is created by UNESCO on 23rd of April, 1995, to celebrate and encourage reading, publishing, and copyright, right? So um, this celebration is brought to you by Collective Perspectives and Zing Media, and we are pleased to present to you poetry. Power, pleasure, perception, passion personified. I'm Chris Ang, your moderator for today, and I'm a passionate poet since 2018, although I've been like Stephanie writing poems since at a young age. My, I hold various profession, but my longest and current most active is as a certified forum and mentoring facilitator with the Young Presidents Organization. I work with CEOs, their family, their organizations to have deeper and more meaningful, authentic conversations in a safe space. I met Stephanie through Lily, her Arden fan and friend, and my publisher, Poon Kok Hua of Creative Candid Publishing for my first book, Steps, The Journey to Self-Empowerment. And when I read her poems, I have to stop and pause because the emotions are overwhelming for me. I have to reflect on what that means for me. And we met brief, we're supposed to meet briefly for an hour, but that extended to a three hour long soulful connections. Now, Stephanie is truly an amazing poet, writer, artist, actress, public speaker, and inquisitive and resilient human being. She spent 18 years, can you imagine that? 18 years to write her 51 poems that is filled with anger, joy, sorrow, mystery, and a whole spectrum of uh, emotions that is entwined in her book, in her poems. And bear in mind, given her physical challenges, she is definitely persistent to complete it. And she did it all um, very beautifully. And you, you will discover more of that later on. So poetry, what is it? Is it a concoction of words and phrases just to stomp us, you know, or is it a language for the elite or what is it? Are, are they there just to have people struggle as to, you know, what are they supposed to do if they want to write a poem, right? So we will hear more from Stephanie later on and, um, uh, this whole webinar will be intertwined with three poem readings with Stephanie sharing and there'll be polling where you can enter your votes after each poem and uh, we'll see how everybody is connecting with the poems and at the end of it we'll have Q&A. So let's sit back and listen to Stephanie share with us her perspective and her thoughts about poems. Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I really am thankful everyone's here today and uh, thank you everyone for taking the time and effort. Poetry to me means everything. But honestly, 
if you ask my five-year-old self, she will only uh, ask you, huh? What are you talking about? What do you mean? What is poetry? I didn't know it back then, but even my favorite nursery rhyme was a form of poetry. For me, one of my favorite nursery rhymes was something called Mockingbird. And it was a nursery rhyme that my mother always sang to me as a baby to put me to sleep. You see, poetry always has a deep connection with the people who read it or the people who listen to it. For me, it was just that connection with my mother that that nursery rhyme Mockingbird speaks of the mother buying the child everything she wanted as a form of love. So for me, that was my first connection with poetry, although I didn't know that a nursery rhyme was a form of poetry at the time. And I'm already turning 37 this year, and till today, I still ask my mom, was that really my favorite piece of nursery rhyme? Because there were so many others that I could have cho chosen from. She said, yes, that's the only one that happened to put you to sleep. Then the rest of it, you just get bored and start crying. <laughs> Poetry is always about how one connects to the words. And for me, as an infant or a toddler, my connection to Mockingbird was, was really what connected me to my mom. I, I would never explicitly admit this to her, but um, that was the stronger, strongest childhood memory I've had since. I don't remember much of my infanthood, but that happened to be a very strong memory. And um, looking at my mom now, as she gets older, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just amazed at how much she has influenced me be, because she used to buy me all those books when I was younger and she, she used to tell me, here, all your mother goes rhymes, you should read. And I, love, I used to love them as, as a child. And looking back as an adult, I think in a way, we only realize things when we are older. And I only realized how much poetry had been a part of my life after I turned 30. <laughs> uh, over to you, Chris. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for that sharing. Yeah, I too write more poems um, later on in my life. Now, um, I want to remind everyone that uh, if you could register to menti.com, uh, very easy to just go to menti.com and register um, because later on there'll be a poll. You can see it on the screen. And there's a code for it. Yeah. I shall read the first poem Fly into the Night. Fly into the night, O oh, you free spirited souls. Let go of the fears in the past. Let this sweet memory forever last. Fly into the night until you touch the brightest star. The star that had always seemed so far away from you, it will no longer stray, for with you it is destined to stay. Fly into the night and you will see the pale moonlight that gives you protection constantly to take away any evil darkness that may come to be. Fly into the night. 
with a gentle, cool, with a cool, gentle wind blowing against your oh so soft skin. This gentle wind whispering to the trees as if holding some secret within. Fly into the night as many may, never will they find the secret, what it is and where it lies. So perhaps it is just meant to be that this secret will forever remain a tantalizing mystery. Now we will go into the pole shortly. Just think into the poem and see how it connects you. We have two questions, so there's two polls for you. Um, we will see it live as the results come in. have 67% saying that they are feeling liberated and uh, 25 each for physically feeling lightness and smiling at the mystery and 20% heart longing to fly yeah me too I want to fly too uh, and 17% smelling the cool air Ooh, smiling Ooh, feeling liberated is, I'm like a racehorse uh, reporter, feeling liberated is going up to 43%. A lot of you are feeling liberated and the rest physically feeling lightness, uh, smelling the cool airs, heart longing to fly, smiling at the mystery are all very close, very close to each other. I'm enjoying this like a racehorse reporter. Um, wow, definitely a lot of you are feeling liberated. 43, 42% of them. Mm, that's cool. Yes, I feel liberated too. Well, so far, that's close tie with uh, physically feeling lightness, heart longing to fly and smiling at the mystery. So the voting is now closed with the highest score of feeling liberating. Well, I'll pass the mic over to Stephanie to share the second part of her perspectives of poetry. Over to you, Stephanie. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, thank you everyone for your responses. I really, really I'm really happy because when I first wrote that poem, Fly Into The Night, that was my intention to make everyone feel like they're flying or, you know, as if they are some spirit in the sky. So I achieved my goal, yay! Right. As I, as I said earlier, um, my first experience with poetry was during childhood. My second experience, however, wasn't as pleasant as the connection with my mom because my second experience with poetry involved, let me see how to put this, a lot of red marks, a lot of scolding, a lot of, why you never read properly? Um, it was basically during my school days in my literature classes. And we were studying Romeo and Juliet and the Crucible at the same time, but we were also studying poetry and prose for one term. And I can't remember the exact title of the poem, but one poem that really stumbled me, because it was my first time actually having to read and study and answer questions about someone else's poetry. Well, it was about a tree. And this tree happened to represent a person. And one of the questions was, 
after because you have to read the po- poem first and then you have to answer a bunch of questions. That's how Singapore exam papers work. So one of the questions was, um, how how do you think the the tree would have personified its emotions in this poem? So I was like reading the the same poem three or four times or five times. I can't remember. I was like, honestly, how do you expect me to understand how a tree feels based on just a couple of lines? And it wasn't modern English, it was old Shakespearean English. And I was, I was literally, great, how am I supposed to answer this question now? Because I don't even understand the poem. I, I, how am I supposed to answer the question if I don't even understand the poem myself? So what, what I did as a student, I left the question blank. And when my teacher um, came up to me and said, uh, why did you leave this question blank? It's 10 bucks, you know. Uh, I said, uh, Miss Tanaba, I really don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> then she said to me, how do you feel when you read the poem? How would you write it yourself? How would you feel if you were a tree? If you were standing there and you were under extreme weather conditions and you were under the snow, under the, wet, under the winter weather, how would you feel? How would you feel if your leaves are dropping, your branches are breaking, how would you feel? How would you feel if you as a, the tree were dying, but you still have to stand up strong and pretend you're okay? How would you feel? That is what personification means. That's what she told me. And I, I, I told her, I still don't understand what you mean, but okay, I will try. So I went back, I did the same question again. I didn't do very well, but at least I passed. And to me, that's the journey of writing poetry. You, you have to like write several drafts of one single poem, and sometimes even you don't even keep your drafts. Like, at least for me, I don't keep my drafts. I don't bother to keep my drafts. I just, okay, not nice, throw away. Okay, this line works, keep. This line works, keep. The rest throw away. I don't, I don't bother to keep my drafts like everyone says we should. Maybe because I'm not, I'm not a conventional person, as in I don't believe in following rules unless I have to. And I think when you write as a poet, you have to make your own rules. People can tell you, oh, you have to write it this way, you have to write in simile, you have to write the way um, certain people write, or you have to write certain words some way, or you can't use, and you can't even use bad words in your poetry. For me, honestly, I don't hold myself back. Because once I start writing, it's like, um, waterfall broken, and the water keeps on flowing, and then it stops. Um, so, for those who are interested in writing their own poems, all I can tell you is, you have to start somewhere. If you don't, you'll never start. In, and if anyone wants to know about writer's block, I can explain more of my process later because I know that that's something everyone goes through. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Stephanie. Yes, we have to make our own rules. But the first step we have to do is start writing. Yes? Yeah, I love that. Um, so we will go now to the second poem, which is Those Eyes. For those of you who just joined, just sit back and enjoy this reading. Those Eyes 
Look deep into the darkness, into the darkness of those eyes. Those eyes that seem to call softly my sweet name, my body frozen of movement. Yet I show no sign of fear or panic, but only stand there awed and mesmerized. Within those eyes, this question never eludes me. What do I see in those eyes that so captivate me? Is it a collision of thoughts that led me to an almost blissful insanity, or is it a secret place where imagination roams free? Whatever the answer may be, let me tell you what I see. I see suspense and mystery. I see romance. And tragedy. I see pirate, Jedi, slayer, and spy, each with their own enemy to fight. I see love, gentle as a dove, they say. Though do keep in mind, the heartbreak, pain, and tears I have faced is a heavy price all of us must often pay, leaving only a broken. Heart. Yet strong we have to stay, for nobody said love was easy anyway. There are those of this world who tell me to look away from those eyes, to stop being a dreamer. For God's sake, start facing reality. Don't take another bite of the poisoned apple left in Snow White's hand. In response to them. I have only this to say: a writer is who I am. No writer is no dreamer. If you can't accept me, then leave me be. How can you expect me to be blind to what I see through those eyes? When those eyes are my very own. Take a moment to absorb that poem, and when you're ready, we shall go to the polls. There'll be two questions for this poll, so take your time. Let's see. Only three、uh, for the first question. There's only three options, so it's pretty quick. And let's see what turns up. Ooh. Does this poem connect with your longing? So far, we have hundred percent of yes, very much so. It's a pretty pie, and there's a、uh, about forty seconds to go. Ooh, say yes, but I have too many considerations to be liberated. Wow, that is taking the majority of the vote, with a smaller portion of no. I have the fear of flying, liberating, liberating through this poem. And with thirteen seconds to go, again. Very、uh, old,、oh, and the poll is now closed. With the majority saying that、um, they connect with this poem, with、um, yes, I have too many considerations to be liberated, and、um, the a quarter of it say very much so. They are connected to this poem of longing. Your longing. Let's go to the second poll question. What senses were stirred, or what emotions come up for you in this poem? So you have nine choices, and I'm curious what will come up. This poem of those eyes. Ooh, I like the live visual of、uh, the votes coming in, like a little 
uh, ping pong ball dropping into various uh, pockets. At the moment, heaviness uh, takes the heavy weight. Sorry, that's a lame joke. Um, com compassion is building up, playfulness, intimacy. Ooh, I can see. That's interesting. There's uh, less than a minute to go for you to enter the poll. I hope to see more votes coming in. So right now, playfulness and intimacy are equally 25% uh, each and heaviness and compassion is 17% each. Any more votes coming in? I have 8% for confusion. Ooh, 8% love. Mm. Some of you are feeling love in this. And 10 seconds to go before you cast your vote. So the vote is voting is closed and the highest score is intimacy and playfulness of trailing behind is heaviness and compassion at 17% each. And we do have 8% of love and confusion. Now, over to you, Stephanie. I would love to hear what do you think about the, the polls, the votes, and also another part of your sharing of poetry. Over to you, Stephanie. Thank you, Chris. Wow, the responses actually were quite surprising because when I wrote this poem, I was actually writing about myself, um, about me, but as, as all my poetry, all my poems go, they, they relate to other people in some way. Um, I know that Chris mentioned in her intro that I have a physical talent, as you can see. Um, I'm a wheelchair user, but I don't really let that define me. As in, yes, I'm a wheelchair user, but that's only a part of me. And when I write these poems, sometimes the ori original intention is about me, but I want it to be more of a human, a human, um, message. For the poem that Chris just read, it's, it really speaks of all creative people in general, because I think creative people don't really get enough traction in society. I mean, of course we do because we have jobs that sustain us, but you know, if, if we look at the world today, the world of information and technology, everything is IT now. And sometimes those people with the arts flair, we get pushed aside. Speaking of pushed aside and speaking of the arts flair, um, there is one particular section in my poetry collection that is titled The Unspoken. The Unspoken is basically a collection of poems that speak for me when I cannot speak for myself. As in, they speak of my political views. In the age of Me Too and free freedom of speech on social media, everything you say Everything you type, every syllable that use, you use online is watched. Whether, whether or not you like it, it is watched. And I, I think the words we use nowadays, we have to be careful what we say, when we say it, and how we say it. Um, Chris will read a poem later which which I wrote because 
actually, originally, it was a performance piece. I have performed, I have performed it a few years ago, but looking at it now, it is more than a performance piece because it speaks of the climate of politics now. Not just, not just internal politics as a country, but global, global politics, as in women's rights, Me Too, Time's Up, all that jazz. I believe everyone has a right to speak up, including those who don't really have the avenue to, don't really have a platform to. And speaking up gives you power. Poetry wasn't my first avenue of speaking up. My first avenue of speaking up was Toastmasters. I really appreciate what Toastmasters have taught me and what it has brought me. Um, because without Toastmasters, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here speaking to you so fluently like I am now. Believe it or not, my very first brush of public speaking was only because I wanted to save my best friend from embarrassment. You see, we were all doing a group project. Okay, it was in international school and he got stuck halfway. Because my best friend is a very popular guy. He was very popular in school, so all the girls like to make fun of him. And at that time, everyone was shooting questions at him and not me. So they did it on purpose just to, just to annoy him. And what happened next? Because all this while, I was just sitting there in front of everyone else. I was like, okay, don't say anything, don't say anything because you don't know what to say and you don't want to embarrass it yourself. But because I couldn't, I couldn't handle him being shot at left, right and center, I finally spoke up. I was like, hey, look, if you all want to ask him any questions, he doesn't know the answer, just ask me. I just read the whole book and I have the answers right in my head. So stop looking at him, look at me and ask me the questions. And he's never forgotten that, they would say. And it was because of my public speaking training that speaking words of power became almost a strength for me and it soon translated into power of poetry. And the, the poem that Chris is about to read, after I stop talking, I think I talked too much already, uh, is one that is very important because it speaks of um, the global humanity and I think everyone needs to remember that despite our race, religion, our ages, our genders, you know, our sexual sexuality, we are all human and if we don't put aside our differences, we will never we will never come to agreement in anything. So Chris, please take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. Yes, I connect with what you said very well. Our words are power and we need to let it out. So here is the third and last poem of this segment. Unidentity. A piece of blank paper, a length of untouched fabric, this world forever trying to decipher my unidentity. Who am I? I dare you to take a guess. Not complex signs, nor secret nuclear codes left in Donald Trump's unhinged hands. Who am I? I am me, you, we, 
us, them. Blank paper or untouched fabric. I do not think these names matter. Crushed or crumpled. Torn or thrown to the floor. When chaos strikes like lightning strikes. Sorry. When chaos like lightning strikes, who in your life will stand firm? Who will eventually walk away? So again, take a moment to let that poem sink into you and we will go to the poem. There is only one question in this poll. What comes up for you when you listen to and or read this poem? So right now, the majority is I realize that I need to associate myself to one or more identities. Mm. And trailing behind is my mind is broadened by this poem. So we have two votes that says I'm lost and one that says I totally connect with this poem. So as we have 20 seconds to go, I see equal share of votes coming in. I'm lost. My mind is broadened by this poem and I realize that I need to associate myself with one or more identities. So now the vote is, the voting is closed and um, let's go back to Stephanie to hear what she thought about the vote the polls that comes in, the vote that comes in, and of course, another part of her sharing of poetry. Over to you, Stephanie. Thanks, Chris. Wow, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine people getting lost because of the poem. But yeah, I suppose I was a bit lost when I first wrote it, uh, but because I was trying to put it in a universal theme. So, you know, I was a bit lost when I first started. But when it came together, it just turned out the way it did. Uh, now, for my last sharing, I just want to say that poetry is not something that is hard to reach. It is not something that Oh, only the, only the smart people understand. Or only the people who are very good in English, who, who read a lot, understand. Poetry actually comes from your heart. Poetry comes from the core of you. Um, and poetry are, are just your words, are just inner conversations that you don't have anyone else but yourself. You know, there is something that I always do when I'm alone. Um, and people who do not know me very well would think I'm a little crazy, but I do talk to myself a lot. I, I talk to myself when I write. I talk to myself when I listen to music. I talk to myself when I am watching a movie. I talk to myself basically all the time. And I think this conversation with oneself is, is completely normal. It is not something that is that it should be frowned upon because ultimately you're the only person who knows yourself best. And people can tell you what to do or where to go or what, how to dress or, or how to behave. But in, at the end of the day, you have to know yourself. And it has taken me so long 
to know myself. Honestly, till this day, I'm still self-discovering. And my friends would tell me, um, so first I don't even know who you are anymore. I said, I would tell them, it's okay. You can always discover me again. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess as a writer, that's how it is as, as well. And you have to know that when you set yourself out to write something, a goal, you will eventually get there. I, for me, it's been really, really difficult because um, writer's block has been the bane of my life, especially lately. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm okay to write plays and poetry, but if you ask me to write something else other than what I know to write, I will get stuck halfway. And I will feel as if, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? Well, to be honest, there is no right answer. And I wanted to know if you ever have writer's block and um, you feel that you're going to tear your hair out. Don't worry, it will end soon. Because um, it did end for me somehow, and I came up with a whole collection. So it's just about persevering and having those around you understand that you have to persevere and you need your quiet space. And everybody needs to shut up and let you do your work. Um, I hope whatever I've shared today has been helpful to everyone in some way. Um, I look forward to your questions in the Q&A. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Stephanie. And um, yes, you can send in your questions to admin in the chat box below. Just go to admin and post your questions. And uh, we've come to the end of the poetry reading segment and we'll try to answer your questions. Ah, I see one question popping up. Can you share a time when poetry comes to you in the most unexpected way? Please share what triggers it and how it developed. Over is it to you, Stephanie, to answer that question? Thanks, Chris. Share a time when poetry came to me in an unexpected way. There is one poem in my collection called On This Beautiful Day. That poem speaks of um, it speaks of my stepfather and how we are, we are about to give my mom away to him for my mom's second marriage. And honestly, when I first started writing that poem, it, it was really difficult to explain how I came to it because I was just sitting at the computer and I was playing a certain song on repeat. By the way, uh, it was uh, slip, slip Away by April Lavigne and I was just crying my eyes out and then my mom was like because I had promised my mom that I wanted to write her a poem for her wedding gift as a wedding gift to her and when she came home she was like are you supposed to be writing? Why are you sitting there and crying? I'm like I am, I am, I am writing and I am crying at the same time then, she, she asked me this question, Hey, you're not happy I'm, I'm remarrying, is it? I said, no, that's not the point. The point is, the, the, the song is making me cry so that I have the right emotions to put down on, on the document and in the poem. And lo and behold, after one or two days of literally trying my eyes out, uh, the poem was completed and it was read at my parents' uh, wedding ceremony on 7 July 2007. So, mom is not watching today because she's busy at work and Uncle Stephen is busy golfing. But I thought that is an appropriate answer for that question. 
Over to you, Chris. Thank you, <laughs> That is such a very interesting uh, story. I have another question here. Are there certain ideal conditions you need to have in place for poetry to flow? What are they? Over to you, Stephanie. Thanks, Chris. I wouldn't say ideal conditions, but it's just when you when you really have the urge to write, I just write. Like I can be in my room on my bed and my phone is my mobile phone is beside me and it can be like five AM in the morning. Um and I just decide to start writing until I finish the whole poem which would probably take me until two hours straight. So um, I guess I need to be alone. I need quiet. I need um, darkness, actually. I, I can't have, I can't write when it's too bright. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, I can't write when it's too bright. And yeah, it's just quiet and being alone and ha having like loud music around me and having no one like walk in and out of the room. Um, it's just that. It's just the quiet, the, the quietness of everything just calms me now and helps me focus. But of course in Singapore it's really hard because like everywhere you go is construction, construction, construction. So like there's a construction site near my house and it's been really hard to write anything other than short like lines. Yeah, quiet is most important for me. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, I know you've shared about writer's block. So we have a question that comes in. Uh, do you encounter writer's block? And how do you unblock it? Does writer block indicate the writer's personal growth? Would you um, care to share more about writer's block? I think it is very, um, very uh, relevant question as to, especially for those who want to embark on um, being an author, uh, even writing poems, and all at all and at all kinds of ages. So, please, over to you, Stephanie. Um, for me, writer's block. It is necessary because um, it is when all the thoughts are mess uh, around your head, and you don't know which one to pick and which one to match with which one. And that is a time when actually you you feel you as a writer grow because you develop characters even in poetry. You don't intend to have characters, but they just develop by themselves. You know, there's one poem in my collection. It's called "Cry of the Untamed," and I didn't initially I didn't want there to be any characters. It was supposed to be about a specific person, but I didn't want the poems of any characters. But because I couldn't write all at one shot, and I realized that, hey, even if I develop um, the character as, it, as I go along, it wouldn't be so bad. And it, it almost became like a story for me. You know, some of my poems can actually be turned into plays if I wanted to. So I think writer's block is not really a bad thing if you consider it as okay, you're taking it, you're taking out all the, the rubbish and putting it in one place and putting the rubbish in specific areas so that you can sort it out when you're ready. Thank you, Chris. Over to you. Thank you, Stephanie. And uh, I think we do have one more uh, time for one more question. And this is also very pertinent to most people, aspiring writers. 
Uh, do you do any research when you write poetry? How do you find courage to share such personal details? Over to you, Seven. Thank you, Chris. To be honest, I, I'm going to disappoint the whole academic student body. But I don't do any research when I write my own poetry. I know I should. I know, I know that's what everyone does. But I don't follow convention. So I don't do research. How do I find the courage to share such personal details? I don't think it's finding the courage. I think as a writer, you have to think of characters. If you think yourself as a character, it won't be so bad to share personal details. It's not you. It's a character you're playing or a character you're sharing about. Yeah. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Stephanie. And we definitely have heard her share uh, a lot of um, about what poetry means to her and how is her journey so far. And um, yes, you heard her in her own words. She's not a conventional <laughs> poet or writer. And um, I do connect a lot with her um, as I completed my book. Um, and I was on a radio show and the DJ asked me what kind of literary background I have. Um, no, I didn't study poetry, you know, or poems, or I'm, I'm not in liberal arts. But my passion, just like Stephanie, just wants to be heard. And that's how we, we, we started writing poems. So definitely a huge connection. Now you know why we are friends, yeah. Uh, so, um, this brings us to the end of this webinar and uh, we hope this webinar has been thought-provoking, inspiring and insightful for you. Uh, together with Stephanie, Lily and uh, Creative Perspectives and Zing Media, we are just thrilled that you spend this one hour uh, on a Saturday afternoon with us. and. Um, and thank you for your active participation and the polls. Um, I would like, if you want to get in touch with Stephanie, please go to her Facebook and we'll show you a slide. Yes, her Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash stephanie.e.fan. And um, you can also get your copy of Shades from the link uh, that is shown on the slide. And you can get it directly to them from them. And if you are overseas, please um, understand that there will be shipping charges. Now, the ebook version will be available on Google Play Store sometime in a week's time. And uh, as long as you are registered, we have your email. We will send you the link so that you can purchase the ebook version when the time comes, when it's available. So together with everyone here at the studio and Stephanie and me, we want to thank you again and we wish everyone a very beautiful Saturday. See you soon.